Hi, I'm Jared Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Laboratory. And I want to answer this question, could your symptoms with chronic pain and chronic fatigue be caused by low levels of vitamins and minerals? The short answer is absolutely they could be. And I want to talk about how to find out if they are in your case. So one of the things, if you're ever participating in one of my studies, whether it's neuroimaging or a clinical trial, we're probably going to do a lot of blood tests on you. And the reason we do that is to rule out other reasons why you might have pain or fatigue or cognitive issues other than you have fibromyalgia or ME-CFS. There's a lot of things that can mimic those conditions um, when it's actually a different medical condition and the blood tests help us to do that. One of the things we pay attention to are certain vitamins and minerals because if you have too much of a deficiency, it can mimic these chronic conditions. I want to talk about how devastating low vitamins and minerals can be. I think, you know, we hear about vitamins and minerals since we're in grade school and people take them for granted. And I did as well. And I'll tell you a little bit of the story and a little bit of why uh, that was not very smart of me to do. And there are millions and millions and millions and millions of people in the United States and in the world who have deficient levels of vitamins and minerals, and it's causing issues. In fact, probably most people are deficient in something and uh, is making their life more difficult than it needs to be. Some people have deficiencies so great that it's putting their lives at risk, um, or it's causing horrible symptoms like dizziness and fatigue and confusion, cognitive issues, um, tingling in their hands and feet, so paresthesias, all kinds of problems that are very debilitating when the only thing wrong with them is they're just not taking their vitamins and minerals. So I really want to um, spend some time talking about this because the majority of people walking around with issues due to these low levels of vitamins and minerals, they have no idea. And so it's something we absolutely have to check. So if you have a low level of one of these essential vitamins or minerals, again, it can look like fibromyalgia, it can look like MECFS, it can look like an autoimmune disorder, it can look like diabetes, it can look like multiple sclerosis or depression or neurological disorders. When again, it's just a matter of taking the proper um, nutrients. The reason I, I'm kind of making a big deal out of this is in most cases, it's such a simple fix I would really hate to think, well, actually not. It's not, um, it's not an if. I really hate to think how many people have their lives more complicated than it needs to be or their chronic disease is more serious than it needs to be uh, when that fix is so easy. So I'm going to kind of drill that uh, point home as much as I can. So you know the, the basic story of the vitamins and minerals. You've got the 13 essential vitamins. You've got the 21 essential minerals. Essential, as you probably know, means they're essential. You have to have them. If the levels get a little bit too low, it's going to cause symptoms. If they get too low, it will cause you to go to the hospital and it can kill you. They're absolutely essential. You have to get them and, and you generally don't produce them yourself. And so you have to get them from a source, which means you have to eat the right things to get that in your body. I do tend to think of them... I guess it's kind of a crude analogy, but I think of them like the fluids in the car, your gas and your uh, air in your tires and their oil in your engine. If you let the levels get too low, it can damage your car. Uh, I, this happened when I was in my mid-20s. I let the oil get too low in my car and it seized up the engine and, and broke the whole car. So if they get low enough, it can cause symptoms, but if they get too low beyond that, it can cause uh, true um, health issues. And the reason I use that analogy is because I think in both cases, a lot of people tend to ignore the fluids in their car and the air in their tires, and they let the, the air get lower and lower and lower until you get a flat or something happens. And I think a lot of people do the same thing with their own bodies, is they ignore the symptoms, and these really obvious things are dropping lower and lower and lower, and they don't catch it until it's a serious medical issue, and we don't want that to happen. So, you know, um, I, just to get everyone on the same page, you know, when I'm talking about vitamins and minerals, we're talking about all the letters, you know, vitamin A and vitamin E and vitamin C and vitamin D and all your vitamin Bs. So your B12, you hear a lot about if you have ME-CFS or fibromyalgia, you've definitely heard about this. 
uh, your B9, so your folate. Um, B6 is very important. Then you've got potassium and zinc and magnesium is critically important. So a long list. So again, 13 plus 21, that's a lot of things to test. You got calcium and copper and chromium, lots of things to test. And I can't go into each one of those. They're all important. You have to have all of them. Now, uh, one thing you might wonder is, well, if, if we can't get them all tested, which ones should I focus on? And uh, again, they're all important, but I guess there are a few, probably one of six that come up um, the most frequently. And so I guess if you went to your physician or clinician and they said, well, you can only take, we can only test six things. What do you want tested? That's not how it's going to go down. But if you were asked that question, you should get your B12 tested. You should get your B9, your folate tested. You need to get your iron tested. Then you should get your vitamin D tested, then your calcium, and absolutely your magnesium. These are the things that are most likely to be deficient and the most likely to cause fatigue and related issues. So you need to get those tested. I think um, without going into what to do about them if they're low, I'll touch on that a little bit. But really the message for this video right now is please just get these things tested. And not just once, really ideally you should get these tested once a year. This should be an annual checkup type thing. Now if your vitamin levels, mineral levels always look good, maybe you can go testing them once every two years. As long as you haven't changed your medication and you haven't changed, um, your symptoms haven't changed, maybe two years. But I would really advise once a year because you never know when, when these things change. It could be normal and then suddenly it's not and it's causing issues. And then if you do change your meds, if you do get new symptoms, absolutely get those tested. Now, uh, where do you get them tested? Most of you are probably already on top of this. Your primary care provider, clinician, is the first place to, to go. And they'll, they do these tests all the time. So you can say, I want a comprehensive, super comprehensive vitamin mineral test. And they should run that for you. They should never argue about running that. It's a, it's a pretty easy thing to do. It takes a minimal amount of blood to do. Very, very, very easy. So get comprehensive. If you don't have access to a clinician to do that, there are alternatives. Um, there is LabCorp and Quest, and we use these companies in our decentralized clinical trials. They're all over the place. You can go online, you can order the test, they'll have a physician review it, and then you can walk in and they'll do the venipuncture and run the test and send you the results. And you can do that without going through your clinician, or if you don't have a clinician, you can still do this. So you don't need your own doctor to do a LabCorp or Quest, and you just go into the, one of their many locations and get it tested. So you can do that. Um, not as not as good as having your PCP do it, but it still works and the tests are valid. If you can't even do that, there are at-home tests, like uh, we use uh, Let's Get Checked with our decentralized clinical trial, and they ship a kit home and you can do it yourself. Um, it can work. It's not optimal because you have to do a finger prick and you have to give about half a mil of blood. And that's a, that's a good amount of blood from a finger prick. Uh, I've done them to test them. Uh, I've I find that they're fine, but um, you know my concern with doing tests at home is you have to ship it via FedEx, and you don't know is it going to be sitting in a hot van in the summer, and you know it's just harder to have that kind of laboratory control that you'd like to have to make sure that your tests are accurate. So um, not to say anything negative about the those tests at home, but I think there there's something to consider only if you can't do it in an actual laboratory. So they're kind of a backup option. If you do find a deficiency in one of these uh, tests, take it really seriously. Like it could be causing your symptoms or it could be posing a health risk. Now getting having too high levels or something to talk with your physician as well, chances are you're gonna be looking at things that are too low. And really um, it should be your priority to get those into the normal range if they're deficient. And most people just don't take it seriously. I think in the United States, most Americans are either low of on D or E, and uh, that's going to be causing issues. So don't be one of, of them. Make sure you're getting all your levels in the appropriate, um, 
in the appropriate range. I, I guess I feel like I'm hammering on this issue a bit too much. Uh, one reason is that this happened to me. And so I'll tell you uh, my, uh, I'll make it a quick story. So for probably the past year and a half, I was having a, a, a pretty significant issue with heart palpitations. And so these are premature ventricular contractions. And these are these kind of lurching things you get in your, and you feel in your heart and your chest every once in a while, except mine weren't every once in a while. They were very common. And I got a 24 hour EKG, uh, electrocardiogram uh, measurement tool. And I could see I was getting PVCs all the time and they were pretty uncomfortable. It was probably one beat out of every 20. So I was getting hundreds and sometimes maybe a thousand of these a day. <clears throat> and that's a bit too much. It puts a bit of a strain on the heart. The real problem is if I tried to exercise, they would happen once every four beats and then it starts getting uncomfortable. And then if I got my heart rate over about 140, like if I was trying to run or bike, it was every once every third beat. And that, at that point, it's alarming. And so I was really concerned and it was limiting the amount of exercise I could do because I couldn't get my heart rate up because of these PVCs. Could not figure out what was going on, uh, was exploring a lot of things. You know, one time, one thing that would always uh, kick off the bad PVCs is there was a hill next to my house. I would climb to the top. And then when I would start to go down, those PVCs would just hit so hard. And I was getting alarmed. Um, now, I did my uh, comprehensive test, and I had two vitamins that were low, deficient. Uh, one was vitamin D and one was B12, which are the same things that probably most of you, if you get them tested, you might be low on one of those two. So pretty classic story. Uh, vitamin D was for the normal reasons. I wasn't outside very much, and you have to get that from sun exposure or you have to take um, vitamin supplements, and I wasn't taking vitamin supplements. The B12 is because I don't eat a lot of meat. That's something that happens if you don't eat a lot of meat. So nothing unusual there. Now, I like to try one thing at a time to see what actually helped. So I started with the vitamin D, and uh, I started taking vitamin D supplements, and I didn't notice anything. And it didn't help the PVCs, the premature ventricular contractions. So I did that for a month, and then I started the B12. I had little B12 gummies, and uh, it was one night. I'm like, okay, I'll start this. And so I took my B12, chewed it up, and uh, went to sleep. Uh, the next day, I went through my day, didn't think much about it. And then at the end of the day, I said, I don't remember feeling any PVCs today. That's weird. It's been about a year since I haven't uh, felt that today. Um, I did, I honestly, despite the fact that I had taken that B12, um, I didn't immediately make the connection that there could have been that big of an effect. Um, so I didn't think that much of it. The next day I did exercise and I did that long walk and I got to the top of the hill and I was saying, okay, here come the PVCs, got to the top of the hill and there was nothing. I was holding my heart going, there's no PVCs. And so then I got my EKG strap and I put it on and I went the next day, none, no PVCs. I would have hundreds or thousands and they were gone. And uh, to finish that story, I haven't had them since. And they, it was 100%, without a doubt, purely a cause of my B12 being too low. And I've tested my B12 since then. My B12 is now exactly where it should be and the symptom is completely gone. So. Check your vitamins and your minerals. I know for the majority of you who are listening to this, I'm not suggesting that your problem is going to go away because I imagine your clinician is probably already on top of vitamins and minerals. But for some of you, this will actually make your symptoms go away. So please, everyone, check. Again, the solution for all you won't be vitamins and minerals, but again, this deficiency may be making your symptoms worse than you need to be. And if you have something like fibromyalgia or ME-CFS, you do not need anything to make things any worse than they have to be. So please uh, get on top of testing these. Now, why would you have a deficiency? I think most of you know the, the general story. It's usually diet. If you have a restrictive diet in some way, you may not be getting all the vitamins and minerals, uh, the nutrients you need. If you eat cheese, queso three times a day and that's all you eat, you're going to be missing important macro or micronutrients. So um, it may just be a matter of correcting your diet and adding something to your diet. 
Now, sometimes it's not your diet. Sometimes it is the medication you take. One of the more common examples would be some blood pressure medication and your potassium levels. There are some blood pressure medications that can cause your potassium levels to decrease significantly. And so, yes, it could be your medication. So if you start a new medication, especially if it's one that's known to alter vitamins or minerals, be sure to get them tested and maybe even every six months in that case to make sure because a drop of potassium is a significant issue. Now, um, it could be your genetics. Uh, an example would be there are some gene variants that cause an inability to absorb vitamin D very well. And so if you have low vitamin D and you're tired all the time, and then your physician's like, okay, take vitamin D, and you take the vitamin D, but you're still tired, and you test it and your vitamin D is still low, it might be because you have a genetic variant that's causing you to not absorb that. And so you'll need to um, potentially find out if you can get that tested and see if there's some alternative ways to um, treat that issue. If it's not that, it could be a digestive tract issue, like an inflammatory chronic disease of your digestive tract, like a celiac disease, in which case you can't absorb your vitamins and minerals. And you will need to uh, treat that and talk to your doctor about how to get your vitamins and minerals if you can't just do the typical uh, eat a, um, you know, a little multivitamin. So how do you treat this? Uh, as I mentioned before, I wasn't going to go into how to treat it. It's a very complex issue. And it really depends on your individual case. So definitely talk, talk to your clinician about that. Mo I think most of the time it's as easy as changing your diet or taking a specific good supplement. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes you have to bypass your digestive tract. You may have to get a shot. For example, if it's like a B12 shot. Um, or you may need to take special vitamins that do not aggravate the digestive tract. So if you have celiac disease, you may need special uh, vitamins that don't cause inflammation and prevent the absorption of that vitamin. So there's a lot of variables, but just get it tested, find out what's deficient, and then find out how to tackle that problem. And then monitor your levels to make sure that you've corrected the problem. And then see if it makes you feel better. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, pretty simple request here, but it's super, super important. Um, I do want people to get this tested once a year. And uh, again, that's the basic story. Bottom line, be sure to rule this out. There are uh, lots of things to rule out. Again, I don't want people having these diagnoses of fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome and Gulf War when I know that some of you, it's actually something else. And we just have to uncover that. And I would like to take care uh, of as many people as possible with these, with these known things while we're trying to figure out the more complex disorder. So please get those tested. Um, I, I mentioned in an earlier video, I'm doing a, a kind of a list of things to try. This is the second one. The first one was sleep apnea, which is again, super important. After that, I would say check your vitamins and minerals. And so I'll, um, I'll add that to the list of things to try. And you can check out that earlier video if you missed that about how sleep apnea may be causing your um, symptoms. So I'll, uh, I'll continue doing these videos and give you advice on um, what to check to get to the bottom of your condition. So that's it for now, and I will be coming uh, with a new video very shortly. Thanks a lot.